<laughs> it's here, and there's no turning back. From its 228-foot plunge, speeds up to 82 miles an hour, three terrifying passes through the Thunderbolt, and a few other surprises. It's ready. Are you? <laughs> Revenge will be mine. As you crest the top of Phantom Revenger's Lift Hill, you dive down your curving first drop, which is rather intense and really fun. You then hit a straightaway that sends you into another hill that banks strangely at the top. Then you dive down your biggest drop, 228 feet under Thunderbolt. You then bottom out and get hit with a strong dose of positive G-forces before rising into a large turnaround. You drop to the ground, pass under Thunderbolt, and get one quick pop of airtime before going into this ride's awesome finale. You then hit six quick pops of ejector airtime that absolutely fling you out of your seat. This is some of my favorite airtime on any coaster, just with how insane it is. It's not sustained by any means, but it is so quick and powerful, it's amazing. You then fly right into the brakes. Phantom's Revenge is a Morgan Hyper roller coaster that opened at Kennywood Park in 2001. It is the tallest currently operating roller coaster at Kennywood. Haha <laughs> guys, get it light cause downtime. Moving away from whatever that was, Phantom's Revenge stands tall over Kennywood being the second tallest ride at the resort with a max height of 160 feet. Despite no longer being the tallest coaster in the park, it is still the fastest in the park with a max speed of 85 miles an hour. In fact, it is currently the fastest roller coaster in all of Pennsylvania. Moving away from the stats, let's go right into our first category, presentation. Phantom's Revenge is located on the left side of Kennywood. Kennywood doesn't have really any areas besides Steelers Country, so let's just say Phantom's Revenge is located on the left side of the park. Unfortunately, this this coaster only has two moments of theming. The first one is the entrance, which has a phantom holding the words Phantom's Revenge. And as you enter the station, there is a large phantom that is pretty much acting as a doorway. The rest of the queue is completely unshaded and has no theming to the ride at all. And that is pretty much the same with the station, except for the station is luckily shaded. I also really like the name Phantom's Revenge, how it ties into the whole history of it. Overall, I will give Phantom's Revenge a 7.5 for presentation. It's not the best, but it certainly could could be a lot worse. Now it's time for the ride experience. The track on Phantom's Revenge is 100% smooth with no rattle, vibration, or anything like that. However, some of the transitions are, let's just say, a little bit questionable. However, I don't mind the janky arrow track in the beginning, and I really do enjoy the ridiculous airtime moments at the end. Let's keep with the ride experience, but move on to the coaster's trains because I absolutely love them. They are so incredibly weird because they couldn't use traditional Morgan trains because they had to use an aero chassis, so they just kinda had to put a few things together and they came up with this. Once you've sat down in your train, you buckle your seatbelt. This is an extremely loose seatbelt, and from when I rode, the ride operators were not enforcing you to tighten it, so it's just kinda loose and flopping around, so it does not affect you whatsoever. And now for the most glorious part about Phantom's Revenge the lap bars. The lap bars come down from the side, so it's a little bit awkward getting in, but you will be so thankful for them during the ride experience. If you just prop up your inside leg, then you physically cannot be stable, just because of the way that the lap bars come down. Yes, unfortunately, the lap bar will come down during moments of high g-force, so if you just keep up your inside leg, you will be fine, but if you do not, you will be stapled by the final brake run. Anyways, for ride experience, Phantom's Revenge will be receiving a 9.5 out of 10. I only wish that the coaster could just be a little bit longer. Speaking of length, let's move on to our final category, the length category. As stated previously, I wish Phantom's Revenge could be a little bit longer, but let's dig a little bit more into that. RCDB, or the Roller Coaster Database, states that Phantom's Revenge is 1 minute and 57 seconds long. However, that includes the brake run and the lift hill. And in case you didn't know, Phantom Revenge's lift hill is extremely slow, just like any other aerodynamics lift hill. It started sprinkling! 
After timing a few POVs and digging around a little bit, I came to the conclusion that from drop to breaks, Phantom's Revenge is just about 47 seconds long. Which isn't ridiculously short, however, it isn't long either. I'm sure that nobody would have minded if they would have just given it an extra helix or another couple of airtime hills. For length, I will give Phantom's Revenge a 7 out of 10. It's definitely not a long ride, but it definitely could be a whole lot worse. Now that we've finished up the categories, I just want to go over my final thoughts before I give an overall score. Phantom's Revenge is an absolutely amazing ride that sits comfortably inside of my top 10, however I find it to be a little bit overrated. First of all, the airtime isn't as good as people say. Yes, it is absolutely amazing, but people call it some of the strongest airtime on earth, and I just didn't feel that. Also, it is a fairly short ride, so that takes away from it too. Despite all of those flaws, Phantom's Revenge is still my favorite roller coaster at Kennywood. However, Steel Curtain was closed for my entire visit, so when I revisit the park in a few years and hopefully get to ride Steel Curtain, things may change and I might end up preferring that. However, comparing this coaster to the other traditional hypers I've ridden, it is my second favorite, only behind Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. They are very close in my rankings, in fact, they are right next to each other, with Phantom's Revenge at the number 9 and Magnum at the number 8 spot. Now it's time for the final score. Phantom's Revenge will be receiving a very high score of 9.5 out of 10. Before we end this video, I just want to go over something about my channel that will be changing, the upload schedule. Due to school starting back up, I will not be able to maintain a constant upload schedule of three videos a week, so I am dropping down to just two videos a week. A normal video such as a vlog, review, or prediction will be uploaded on Wednesdays, and a couple Sundays a month I will upload a POV or some off-ride footage. Anyways, what are your thoughts on Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood? Let me know in the comments down below, and be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time on Hang Time Thrills.